video the exact amount of protein you need every day to protect your kidneys instead of harming them with real numbers real science real results and yes for the first time ever on this channel i'm giving you the formula the exact numbers Catherine here, I'm a doctor of natural medicine and today I'm not just here to talk about numbers, I'm here to celebrate a victory! Because earlier this week I saw a comment on one of my videos from a patient of mine, Tony. We've been working together for a few months and what he shared absolutely made my day. Let me read it to you. When I was told I had CKD, I went home and cried. I asked my doctor if I need dialysis soon. He didn't really say anything, just told me to watch my diet. I felt lost. Okay, guys, that hit me. And I want to say something right now. Tony, kudos. It takes real courage to be that honest. Because behind every lab result, every GFR number, there is a human being scared, confused, and looking for answers. And Tony didn't give up. Here's what came next. That's when I found out about Catherine's channel. I learned about the plant-based diet. Honestly, I had no idea before. I thought I was eating healthy with grilled chicken and rice every day. I learned about all the patients that improve with her diet. So I decided to get a consultation with Catherine. And then I got my labs back. My creatinine dropped from 2.7 to 1.3. I feel like food saved my life. I'm still scared sometimes, but now I also feel hope. And that's something I didn't have before. Tony, thank you, truly. Because this, this is why I do what I do. Tony didn't just change his diet. He rewrote his future. He went from confusion and fear to clarity and hope just by learning how to eat the right way. And that's what inspired today's video. Because today, I'm not just going to tell you to eat more veggies. I'm going to show you exactly how to calculate your protein needs. So you can follow a renal diet that's not just healthy, but effective. Whether you're just starting out or you've been trying to figure this out for a while, this video will give you a blueprint you can build on. And before we start, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, tap the notification bell, follow me on all my other socials including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Telegram, Twitter. Yes, I'm still calling it Twitter and <laughs> to carve my name in huge letters into a mountain. Bonus points if the letters are more than 15 foot tall. Okay guys, let's get into the meat of the topic, literally. So, was meat still allowed in the diet of my patient and how much of it, if any? Well, actually, no! There is no meat in the diet of this particular patient. No poultry, no eggs, and no fish as well. And it's just about the same for all my other CKD patients. And frankly, I'm even starting to see patients that want to go low protein even if they don't have CKD. And if their GFR is above 60 as a way to, you know, protect their kidney function. So that's the answer to the first question. No meat, fish, poultry at all. And I can already hear the screams from the comment section, but Catherine, isn't protein essential? How are we going to survive without any steak, bacon, eggs, or burgers? Well, here's the thing. You shouldn't worry about getting too little protein. Nope, you should only worry about getting too much of it. Wait, wait, wait. What? Yes, the vast majority of CKD patients end up getting too much protein, even on a low protein diet, way more than they need. Well, you don't have to take my word for it. Take a look at this. As you can see from my table, incredibly enough, even plant-based foods have protein. Yeah, they do. And What's even more unbelievable is that you can easily outshoot your daily protein target if too many of these foods are present in your diet. 
How is that possible, you ask? Well, let's pretend that your daily target for protein is 30 grams, alright? We will see exactly how much protein you need every day in a moment, but for now, just pretend it's 30 grams. Now, look at my table and let's say you have a big bowl of oats with some bread for breakfast and do you know what happens? You already got almost 15 grams of protein easily. I mean, just with breakfast and without even overeating, without adding any egg or meat. You already got almost half the protein you need in a whole day. Isn't that incredible? I mean, you thought you are eating too little protein by avoiding steak, burgers, and cheese? And instead, you could be eating too much protein by eating oats. And by the way, if you still think this is just my opinion, take a look at this recent paper for a moment. This is a study published on the BMC Journal of Nephrology. And what these researchers mean here is that while CKD patients are supposed to eat as little as 0.58 grams per kilogram per day of protein, which is a very small amount of protein, most of them are simply not able to do so. Even if they try, they end up eating a lot more protein and this can definitely frustrate any effort at improving kidney function. So do you remember what I was saying about, you know, not worrying about getting too little protein but making sure instead you are not getting too much protein? Yeah, this is the reason. I finally understand. Now guys, how many CKD patients are still being told by internet gurus to keep eating poultry, fish, and maybe even dairy? Well, next time that happens, show them this paper. Ah no, just kidding. No keto influencer will be able to understand a word. Reading scientific literature is not something they do. Actually, I think being illiterate is kinda a requirement if you want to be a keto influencer. Now, with that out of the way, the big question is, how much protein do we need every day? Okay, before I was giving you a reference point of 30 grams of protein per day, but that was just an example, you may need more, you may need less, it depends. No two patients have the same dietary target with CKD, everyone is different. That's why your diet needs to be personalized. In fact, if we could give all kidney patients the same diet, we could just hand out booklets at the doctor's office and everyone would start to improve immediately. And I wouldn't need to be here. I wouldn't have anything to say. And I would be just another one of those talking heads full of big words and absolutely nothing remotely meaningful to say. All of the fruit you find today at the supermarket is not natural yeah just like that but you see we can't print leaflets with the instructions for a renal diet and expect it to actually work they tried it in the past and all they got was people scared of fruit but why is designing a renal diet so hard, you ask? Because this is a medically prescribed diet, alright? This is not your standard weight loss diet. This is a diet that requires a high degree of personalization. And you see, the amount of protein you need is the very first thing you need to personalize. So, how to personalize your protein needs based on your body and on your very own individual physiology? Well, first of all, take a look at my table here. There are two types of renal diets that have been proven to help low protein diets and very low protein diets. And by the way, the example with 30 grams of protein per day was a low protein diet, not a very low protein diet. So yeah, many patients can go a lot lower than that. But for most patients, the goal is one of these two amounts of protein. Now, there is a third kind of diet that some renal dietitians still prescribe and it's a diet with a slightly higher amount of protein, which is only recommended to diabetic patients. But I don't really prescribe that diet anymore. Why, you ask? Because recent studies are starting to disprove the old notion that people with diabetes need more protein. Not to mention that most patients with type 2 diabetes need to lose weight. And you know, prescribing them a diet with more calories don't really help. 
with that. I mean, try adding a Big Mac to your diet every day and see how much weight you lose. Let's go back to the renal diet. These you see here are the numbers you need to calculate the amount of protein you need every day. In order to know how much protein you need, you multiply this number by your ideal body weight in kilograms. And ta-da! The very first step towards better kidney health is done. But wait, which one of these numbers is right for me, you ask? And what does ideal body weight even mean? So first of all, these numbers must be multiplied by your ideal body weight, not your current body weight. Some people need to gain a few kilos, others need to lose them. So you can't just multiply the protein number for the current body weight. What we do is estimate the goal body weight, then multiply that number by the grams of protein per kilo per patient needs. And I almost always start with a low protein diet, not a very low protein diet because it's extremely hard to follow a very low protein diet and I don't want my patients to give up their finely tuned nutritional plans like keto dieters at Thanksgiving. This is why I first teach my patients how to follow a low protein diet then when they came back to me after a few months and with an improved renal function, I start to tell them about the very low protein diet, just like I did with Tony. Now guys, we will see in a moment how to tell if you are getting enough protein every day or too little, based not on a food diary, but on your lab reports. Now, I know this has been a lot to take in and if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed right now, that's totally normal. Creating a renal diet isn't about following a few trendy rules or cutting out the random foods. It's about precision. It's about strategy. It's about building a plan that fits you, your labs, your symptoms, your body, your life. And this is where I can help because designing a diet that actually works for kidney patients, not just one that looks good on paper, takes experience. It's what I do every single day with my patients and it's how Tony, the man whose story inspired today's video, saw his creatinine drop from 2.7 to 1.3. That didn't happen by guessing. It happened because he had the right plan and someone in his corner who knew how to guess him. So if you're tired of second guessing every bite, every food label, every lab result, if you're serious about protecting or even improving your kidney function, then I'd love to work with you. I offer one-on-one -on -one consultations and with every first session, I'll design a personalized renal diet just for you. Simple to follow, tailored to your stage of CKD built from real clinical experience backed by science. If that sounds like what you need right now, just send me an email at katherine at newhopeforkinnypatients.com or click the link in the description to book your session. Spots are limited because I want to give each patient the care they deserve. So don't wait, your kidneys are too important. Okay, let's go back to the renal diet. A very important question now. Question, how to tell if you are getting too much or too little protein? Well, look at your lab reports. Usually, when I get a new patient, I have several ways to tell if they are actually eating meat or not, just by looking at their labs. Here's how this works. When a CKD patient eats too much protein, they tend to have a too high bun to creatinine ratio because BUN represents nitrogen, which is like the coal miner's calorie for dietary protein intake. If that's higher than it's supposed to be, well, it's because of too much meat and other protein sources. And guess what? If you're a burger enthusiast, your serum bicarbonate will drop lower than a limbo champion. Remember that the body uses bicarbonate, a base to neutralize all the acid coming from meat and protein. But now, there is not enough bicarbonate to go around. When bicarbonate is too low, many other markers start to go high wire as well. Your potassium will shoot up like a pole vaulter aiming to break a world record. And I could go on because the human body has some hilariously cruel ways of saying, screw you, stop feeding me junk. 
And of course, proteinuria. The more protein in the diet, the higher the proteinuria. So that's how I tell if a patient eats too much protein. Their labs look like a Jackson Pollock painting. But how can you tell if, on the other hand, you are eating too little protein? Well, that's a lot easier. That's a condition called malnutrition. And trust me, you will see it. It mostly happens in very old, very frail patients that have been suffering from advanced kidney disease for many years and that are struggling to eat. In a patient like this, we will find very low serum protein and serum albumin levels. So in short, how to tell if you are eating too little protein? Well, first of all, look in the mirror. If it looks like a skeleton is wearing your clothes, that's the first sign. Then look at your labs. If your doctor keeps circling your serum protein and serum albumin levels in red, yeah, you need more calories and protein. Or even better, a keto analog supplement. Yes, these are special supplements made for kidney patients and they give you what your body needs from protein, but without any toxin. If you want to learn more about them, my video up here is for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Ciao.